You said that rigorous academic historians might resist any imaginative invention, but creative reconstruction is the essence of drama. How necessary is that creative invention in the success of Devil's War and its sequel, New World? Um, well, it's essential to drama, isn't it, Peter? Relative, yeah. Because, um, I mean, you asked me earlier why, given that um, Anne Fanshaw, who, who was never part of the had inspired the, the, the drama, and she was a real character, why we didn't stick with a real character to pivot the drama? And, and the reason we didn't is that the constraints would have been just too great. I mean, we needed an invented character, a character of our imagination, that informed by um, historical events and um, the, the, the tenor of the times, to move through those times, to be the prison through which we could go on that journey. So Angelica had to be everyone. Um, and then that's what that's I, I, what raise this, I raise this issue because you have had some criticism from sort of historians about your departure from fact and that, that the um, introduction of fiction at the level that you have in this drama um, wasn't possibly necessary. They say there's enough drama in the real characters. Well, there's enough drama if you've got, there's enough in it if you've got 25 hours to do it. But when you have to compress and create a dramatic narrative out of some of the bones of history, and only some of them, just take something that, like all art, it's a completely selective process where, well, actually, so is history. But the telling of history, it's all a collective process, a selective process, you know. And, uh, but we we just don't have a problem with that. In fact, we're, we're necessarily open about it. But given that we had, whatever well, we had in the end, four times 48 minutes, not even four hours, we have to tell a story very, very, very swiftly, and we have to take shortcuts. And the biggest shortcut we took was to create a fictional character, uh, Angelica Fanshawe, who, who we would lead the audience through all of the events and all of the other characters, whether they were real or imagined. And I think all of the others were real, were they? Or based but, as much as possible on them. Sometimes quite easily on the yeah. but, but, um, but there's a bigger truth well, well, that we're trying was, to tell. Yeah. There, was a, there is a, a, a credit that comes up in one of the episodes, at least, that says, this is the true story of Angelica Fanshawe. Well, a true account. Well, that, come, that comes directly. Yeah. It's a bit, that's a, that's that's what about to your, uh, yeah. to your research, though, isn't it, for the new game accounts? Many years ago, and, and indeed where this, this story, the idea for the drama came from, was a, a, um, an Enfield thesis I'd written on um, women criminals in the 17th century, and looking at uh, the ordinary new Newgate's accounts, his reports of the, um, the, 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 the uh, behaviour and the confessions and indeed the, the um, gallows speeches of women who were hanged at Tyburn. And not only did those, um, uh, did they exist in abundance, um, but they're, they're also their um, sort of counterparts because no sooner that there was the ordinary of Newgate, the chaplain of Newgate, trying to make money publishing these criminal biographies, but there were lots of um, independent um, hacks who, who would rush to, to print the stories, but which had um, all kinds of um, made-up uh, elements to them. And um, so what we were trying to show, what the, the, in, in, in calling it the devil's whore, which she would have been, given that she wasn't, um, she, she had not conformed. Any woman who didn't conform was by definition a whore. And um, so she, she became known as the devil's whore. And the, 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 the true account of the life and times of Angelica Fanshawe is our nod to, to that Perhaps you, that, that, that leads me to a, a pressing question that I've had since watching the drama is the constant appearance of the devil with this long tongue. Um, could you possibly uh, expand on the significance of the devil's appearance throughout this? Well, that's, that's Angelica's conscience, because 
because in, in, in a, an early part of the story, and Jennifer's mother, who's a Roman Catholic, and uh, because Roman Catholics are being persecuted in the 1620s and 30s, um, she leaves to join a convent in France and abandons her, her daughter. And Angelica throws down the Bible and, and says there is no God. And having denied God, um, she then feels that the devil, she also is coming to get her. visitation. So what might be interesting, Peter, is just to talk a bit about that devil and how when you're making a drama, the whole collaborative process of working with production designers and art departments and directors, and how that particular visual of the devil was never quite up to intentions. <laughs> so there's great prosthetic time. Great prosthetic time. I, I, I didn't mind. I mean, I didn't. I mean, I didn't. I think I did right. You know, for a three foot long tongue at one point. I didn't quite expect it, um, that impact. I certainly didn't. I didn't think he was going to come back that often. But the designer. I mean, it's a gift to a designer. So the designer suddenly got down. Oh, it's every five minutes. It's all over the place. We even, we even put great big torn devils on the front of Anshaw House when we got to South Africa and saw the set. So I'm going to get them to take them down. It's like. It's like. Oh, I'm building a house, I'll put a picture of Jimmy Savile. <laughs> 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 now, 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 Peter, the, the, the Daily Telegraph headlined the news of the pub production of the Channel 4 uh, series with Channel 4 sexes up the Puritans. Yes. Well, this says and more about the <laughs> Daily Telegraph than, than anything else. That was written about a year before I finished writing the script, long before we shot it. <laughs> Um, was based on you know a casual chat with a with a guy who wanted a, was looking for a story, and I of course I never said anything like that, and he just went out, hired some historians who also can't possibly have watched it because we hadn't made it, who you know read the gob, said well they're sexing up the sexing up the the, the Puritans. The program hadn't even finished writing the scripts, never mind shooting it, so it's all made up. So there's no truth to the suggestion you made that Flannery said a self-proclaimed uh, proclaimed Republican believes that merging fact with fiction will help debunk the myths surrounding Cromwell and the Puritans. Well, I might say something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, you, you have said that yeah. the Americans have realised that there is an awful lot of money in sex and adrenaline in costume, and they're busy ransacking our history in order to turn it into a cheap entertainment. Is it better that you perhaps take a little bit out of their football off? Um, well, I don't know in what context I might have said anything like that. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> uh, I think what I was saying was, I don't know what I was referring to, frankly, if I said anything like that. Um, but I, I, I don't mind, uh, you know, a bit of sex and a bit of love and romance. There's far more romance in, and, and love in Devil's Hall than there is sex. Yeah. But it's true, she does, she it's does. Pretty. None of it's gratuitous, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it is all about passion at the end. I mean, yes, one of the things we were both quite interested in, in saying was the Puritans, uh, you know, this comes back to the whole educational thing, I think, about the way that the, the, the English Revolution has been treated and seen and taught. To me, but, but, you know, as part of anybody else, what I learned in school was uh, that they, the, the roundheads were boring and wore, wore German military helmets. <laughs> Um, and never had sex and banned Christmas. Whereas the Cavaliers, they were laughing in it, and they all looked like, what was his name, that comedian, uh, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and they, and they were joyous, you know, and the wrong side lost, and then we had an interregnum. But it's all right, so it all got joined up and put, put, put back properly, you know, a bit later. So that's what, that's what I was taught about the English Revolution, which was never referred to as an English Revolution anyway. But as a civil war that somehow went wrong and the wrong side won, but it's all, you know, every, we got over it in the end, you know, and the, and the king came back and everything was all right. So that's the context in which you sit down to try and create. But not the context in which this was written. No, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> we did do some of the No, no, no. That's what you're, what, you're, what you're talking about in very, very broad terms is, is a very badly informed yes. audience. Yeah. in the English revolution. It's a revolution.
children should be proud of it and its legacy. But a, a veil has been drawn and, uh, by the establishment, and it continues to be drawn. The, um, there's a, this, the British citizenship test that people who want to have, British citizens have to take, there's a huge gap in the, the history section. They don't treat, uh, they don't ask any questions, they don't mention the, the, um, the Republican period. And when the um, Home Office was asked why this was the case, they said it's still too, it's still too much of an uncomfortable memory. It's still <laughs> too <laughs> Look, it's too early to make our minds up. We were speaking earlier, we were hearing earlier about the burial place at uh, Dormant de Ville. Uh, just two years ago, I was overwhelmed to discover that the burial place of Thomas Rainsford in, in St. John's Cemetery in Walking had been uncovered, an unmarked grave. And there was a special unveiling of that, I think, organised by John and some of his colleagues, uh, which I attended. And I found it quite amazing to discover that thousands of levellers wearing their green ribbons had marched through London to Wapping on the day of his funeral, but none of this is, is recorded or properly marked anywhere. Is there a reason why just some sort of veil, as you put it, has been drawn across this, this story? Are they worried there may be uh, an incitement to revolution again? Um, somebody said this morning that. Um it was Jeremy Corbyn, um, about history and the importance of history, that there are things that aren't touched on because we won't um, get ideas. Yeah, I, I, get I ideas. think it's victim's history, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the people who should go down Mark Gray and go down silently tend, tend not to write the history books. Um, but, you know, people like Lil Burn, that's been, that's been eloquently spoken of today, you know, they do get written about, they do, their, their legacy does continue. It's there, it just goes underground for, for a little while, and then, it, and then it's, in certain centuries, at certain times, it pops up again. Like, you know, as you said, the liberal Marxist historians took a completely different view of the levelers and of Cromwell's army, in fact. Uh, and this will go on happening. And this is just our tiny part of trying to rehab rehabilitate a part of English history. We don't do it like historians do it. But think of the possible impact you can help create when a young audience, which is predominantly what we're trying to get um, up with that Channel 4 audience, watches that for four weeks. Um, we're not expecting them to, and um, wouldn't want them to believe it as literal history. And we went out of our way over and over again to say, we are not historians, and you better look this up. But you, but, you know, but go and look it up. Look at what's been taken away from you in the way, because your history's been hidden from you. And it was all made so palatable because it was a love story. I mean, essentially, it's a love story. Devil's was a love story, um, but not a, a love of, um, you know, a man and a woman, or in that case, a woman and several men. Because <laughs> 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 we have to keep moving up forward. Um, but, you know, <coughs> love for one another. And, um, and, and when we wrote started to, to write the sequel, New Worlds, that was our starting point, wasn't it? Yeah. Where did those ideas go? Where did that passion go? Yeah. Um, 20 years later. The restoration comes, Charles is back, and it looks as though everybody's living happily ever after. Yes, because know? the Merry England myth of history is yeah. an even bigger lie than, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the brown heads killed Christmas, you know, like Greek. Charles II was biggest tyrant we've ever had. Now, but you, you did say earlier on in our conversation that uh, there were some difficulties in trying to get your narrative across, and that's one of the reasons for having a character like uh, Angelica. But, but you also had other difficulties. Uh, originally, I understand that there were 12 episodes commissioned uh, to cover the Devil's War, and it was yeah. savagely cut to four. How did that change? It took us uh, 15 years to get it. 15 years from being commissioned. Yeah, being by, by by the way, yeah. 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 <laughs> special. Uh, well, do, you, do you understand any reasoning behind the cut? Uh, the the fact that it's been £7 million. Pounds, well, you, you, you must be careful. careful. Channel 4 didn't cut anything because yeah. it, was a, it was a BBC project. Yeah. And uh, initially they talked about 12 part serial and we created a 12 part Bible. 
that's got the, the outlines of 12 episodes. And that's why I spent a year with us, uh, re 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 uh, um, researching it. Um, then it all fell apart. As usual, the people who were interested in leave their jobs, um, things move on, they're looking for separate different things. The project's dead. Um, roll forward 10, 12 years, someone's running Channel 4 and goes, what would you most like to have made? Uh, and you go, well, uh, we've only got two episodes written, but you know, there's the Devil's Hall, which means an arm and a leg to us. And they go, okay, well, let's do it. Then that shows our bona fides to you because we want to work with you. And so, but we can only, we can only put in five million pounds. We can only do four episodes. It's unlikely to sell abroad. You're not, probably not going to get co-promotion. Are you willing to have a go at doing it four times 48 minutes? They didn't take a breath, we had a really long, long look at it and thought, it won't, it, we can't do all of it, but there is a version of this that we can do and it is worth having a go at, and if we don't, it's never going to get done. So you have to be pragmatic about it. And then it's like if your publisher says, you can't have the encyclopedia, but you can have one volume, and if you want to go at it, uh, and you probably say yes. On the, on the whole, I think that was worth doing. I, mean, I wouldn't always say yes to that because sometimes I think you do have to have you know, the do justice to the yeah. Now we, we, we can have a go with that. There's loads of stuff that we miss from it. Yes, and actually, do you know, Peter, even when the BBC were commissioning their 12 episodes, they, were thinking, they weren't thinking in terms of civil war drama. They weren't really interested in doing a civil war drama. They wanted Angelica Carras Highway. Now, now I did hear mention that uh, the sequel had it's also had it had its problems. Um, I noticed, having uh, watched the Devil's uh, War, uh, that there would seem to be no sort of natural link to the, to the so-called sequel. In fact, I just came across it by accident. Uh, why was that? Uh, again, it's because there was there were new incumbents in the drama department at Channel Four, so the um, the commissioning editor who had, who was keen to do a sequel to, to the Devil's Hall because it had been a big success. I mean, at the time, it was the most watched drama, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, until Indian Summers had. came out, it, it was the biggest the biggest drama for twenty five years. Yeah. yeah, so they were thrilled with it, but then. Change. So we started work on, 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 um, on, a sto on Angelica's continuing story, sort of what happened to Angelica in the Restoration, what happened to those um, radical ideas, and, um, and we very wrote four episodes based on that, and then with an idea to looking at their um, travelling across to America. And uh, the, the, the new people at Channel 4 just didn't. They wouldn't do it unless the first four episodes would encompass that trip to America, because it had to sell to America, and that's what would make it different from The Devil's Hall. And above all, they wanted it to be different to The Devil's Hall, because they look like piggybackers. If they come in and, and, and have a sequel, literally, so that, you know, what is that? What is that to do? Except what is that? Except naked careerism. Mm -hmm. now, Are there any journalists here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, why was it for me? Uh, money, just money. Uh, oh, there, so there weren't uh, quality locations all over Britain. There are. Yeah. Also, really cheap labour in South Africa. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> <laughs> to the extent we were in South Africa, we were able to make every single costume. Every costume. Every single, made. On New World, once we filmed it here, and we only made one costume, everything else was rented and we looked it. I mean, it didn't have the. It, it, it had a pattern that it should have had, but uh, the only costume was Beth's. We were really worried about South Africa that it would never look anything like England. In fact, it passes a lot of the time. And, and one thing it gave you, which I love, actually, was these massive skies. And I just every time I see those massive skies on the Devil's War, I think 
there's something about that that doesn't quite look like the England that I live in, but I not quite like the otherness of that. You know that who knows what the skies look like in 16th century. Yeah. <laughs> perhaps, they did, perhaps they did look a bit grand. Perhaps there was a little bit more. Perhaps the light was a little bit. And it's always great to have a great imagination. Yes. <laughs> but the I mean, to go back. You can you take all the actors out. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, you, if, you, if you look at some of the crowd scenes, it doesn't have to look like a war. war. <laughs> now, now, to go back, I mean, we're here to celebrate the anniversary of Lilden. Um, you described Lilden as burningly revolutionary at the time and bitingly relevant today. How do you, uh, how do you see that? This is the book. You should have said that. that. <laughs> um, well, for all the reasons that everybody's outlined, this morning, um, the, the, the changes we thought, and which we should mention, <laughs> is um, that he, he, with that, uh, he's calling for a chamber pot in the court, which... Um, was that invention or that? That really happened, yeah, exactly. and as a result of that precedent, he won comfort. It's a state of great for everyone here after. So, um, Yes, I mean, I, uh, we just wish that within the, the, the drama that, that, that we have within the Devil's Hall, we could have shown much more of that. Um, He's a real gift to the dramatists, don't you, Martin? Because yes. we work with, but there's no shortage of fabulously interesting revolutionary people in, this, in, that, in that story. Uh, but what would that story have been without Lilda constantly getting on the wrong side of everybody, constantly falling out with all his mates, one by one? But I understood you didn't have much on a personal level of information about him. Well, it was all sort of court days, things like that. Yeah. Okay. You can extrapolate, to, you know, you hear his voice, that, that's the the moment. And also Elizabeth, you know, Elizabeth is silent, but uh, we know that she was um, fantastically strong and supportive, and um, that's why Maxine P and, and that's why she she really um, is the inspiration for Angelica's political awakening. We can have Angelica. I mean, we talk all kinds of things that, that that you know. There's enough of a truth in there. So, for example, with Elizabeth. Um, we have her walking to Oxford, to Fanshawe House, to beg um, for uh, Angelica and Harry, Harry maybe, uh, to, to intercede um, and, and help Lilburn. Um, she, she, and she was pregnant, she didn't walk, she, but she did look right, she made that right. But this history also shows that apparently women play a big role in this place. I mean, yes. 800 women marched them. to Parliament to, to demand the release of yeah. Overton and, and Lilburn. Yes. Uh, so to, to, to some degree, was that an influence in, this, in the two female, big female characters in your life? Well, yes, and because everything is politics. You know, if you can't put bread in the mouths of your children, then you are politicised. But um, somebody like Angelica, that, that's the, on the practical side of things, Angelica is intellectually aware. So when we have we, Elizabeth, um, there's no doubt that she had a hand in writing Lilburn's um, I think it, what, what this also shows on, a, um, it, 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 on another level is that the relationship that will always be between um, history drama, television drama, and you know, history. And history, that, that historians do, that is, we will always follow then, as research gets done, if research gets done, that shows there's a massively more involvement that the 800 women storm par Parliament, you know. So, but that, that's what they were doing in that scene with Elizabeth's we, we story. Were, yeah, yeah, she uh, that was Elizabeth. the shorthand, because we, yeah. But we were, but we, we don't, it's, it's historians who make history up. We don't yeah. make history up. We make, we make dramas up based on what we read of this, if a story is We have to borrow, don't we? We borrow, borrow. borrow clothes, you know. 
and that's why what, what we do isn't, in, so, in many ways, isn't as important as what historians do, but it does reach massive audience. And if we're behaving ourselves, and you might want to ask us whether we are or not, and if we're, you know, if we're being honest and if we're trying our best to live within, you know, what we believe might be true, which is all I think historians are doing as well, but I know they're digging more than we are. We're, but we're, we're borrowing their, their ideas and their research and trying to turn it into something that might reach a popular audience that in turn may be interested enough to find out more about our, our history. So is that your Saying once again, you know, that it's, it's, this was important to us that we felt that the history had been mistold over a long period of time. So was that your drive? Were you wanting to debunk this, to uh, uh, incite interest in this historical topic, or were you interested in good drama or combination? To well, incite interest. interest. To incite really. interest. I mean, yes. to, to, to tell a story. Um, to, uh, to dramatise a wonderful story in as authentic stories, but yeah. it's important, isn't it? I mean, I don't want to write about the Tudors, do you? I just don't like it. That's not what we don't know. But, <laughs> but then, Martina, I, I know you, but I mentioned these comments, you think, oh, it's that long again, you just said, it. but you, you, I had a reason to visit the British Library just last week, a meeting there, and noted that they were just about to open a new exhibition on the Magna Carta. Um, now you wrote that the sign at Runnymede declares oh, no, the sign to be the birthplace of modern democracy. Wrong, you said. Modern democracy was born in the blood, smoke and stench of the English civil wars and in the struggle of those men like John Milburn, whose conviction and sacrifice for the liberties we know today and so readily take for granted. Why are the actions of and is the main part of Well, yeah, well, in, in the sense that I don't think those nobles cared whether the poorest king had, um, had a stake in the kingdom as much as the greatest king. And, um, yeah. No, that's a basic difference, I think. Yeah. Basic. I, don't know. I, don't know. I don't know what drama I would write about Magna Carta. Well, Shakespeare. 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 Yeah. Shakespeare. Peter, <laughs> 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 you could have been highly attained for your land up production of our friends in the world. Um, regardless of one of the most successful BBC television dramas of the 1990s. Yeah, they've never done anything since. <laughs> 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 Thank you. The British Film Institute said it was in the 100th greatest British television dramas uh, made in the 20th century. Yeah, that's quite high. Yeah. Now, <laughs> what is particularly noticeable about it is that it constantly ref ref references real political and social events, mm -hmm. general elections, police government, yeah. government corruptions, and so on, the minor strike. Um, you know, you, you once joked that our friends and awful is a history of British post-war housing. Yeah, I'd like to sell it to yeah. <laughs> to, to what degree should drama reflect rich in reality of our political and social history? Are you after Ken Loach's school of the well, reality? I wish, you know, Ken Loach had a master and I'm not, but um, he, I think we're both trying to, to tell a kind of untold working class history, uh, and I'm, I'm certainly interested in that. What, what, the interesting link for me between our friends in the North and what came later, the Devil's Hall, is that it's, it's again that mix of uh, real people and, uh, and, uh, and fictitious people. Maybe in our friends in the North, it's fictitious people with dressed up real people, uh, but all against. The real, back, the real background of what actually happened. I mean, that was easier for me to figure out because I lived through most of it. Um, whereas, you know, um, that was what. Born in Jerry. I was born in Jerry. Oh, with, with, with that start. That's <laughs> quite a good start. My yeah. grandfather marched and all of that sort of thing. Yeah. So, all of that working class history was kind of at my fingertips, but not recognised by the people who had lived it. I mean, I, I read our friends in the north because I was more interested in the political process and less cynical about it, actually, than my parents were. And that struck me as being odd. And when I asked them why they were cynical about the political process, they, they talked about corruption a lot, and that was what led me to start asking those questions. So I rang up G. Dan Smith and asked him whether he thought there was a story to be told. And, of course, he said, there are, there are the blur here, the whole shit, the Your 
sequel to the devil's world, the new world, um, takes us uh, to follow the lives of the brave Englishmen and women who strove for those puritanical ideal, ideals, subsequently crushed by Charles II, who's been brutally crushed mm -hmm. by him in 1660 when the monarchy was restored and they hadn't just disappeared. You wanted to tell that story. How do you, if I may ask, to reconcile the noble libertarian ideals apparently held by the English settlers with their brutal annihilation and ethnic cleansing of the population of Native Americans? Um, and if you just need to read uh, Dean Brown's Bury My Heart of Wounded Knee to see the extent of the brutality at their hands, how do you reconcile these high liberal values with, with that, those actions? Those Puritans who, um, who went to uh, the New World uh, went to build a city on the hill. Uh, um, they went as God's chosen people. They left these shores and they thought they would be drawn um, to a place where they would be um, exceptional. And so, chosen. Any, yeah, chosen. So any. Um, any interruption in that. And the natives, they got on with them to begin with, the Native Americans, but then they simply got in the way. And they needed to expand. And um, they just wiped them out progressively. Yes, progressively. <laughs> but you said needed to expand. It all sounds very soft. But it was very much a brutal process, wasn't it? Apart from systematic demonstration. Do you think, when you said about being the chosen ones, do you think there was a general belief that the natives were yes. not well human beings or yeah. very well cool. yeah. yeah, yeah. They, they, I mean, at, at first they, um, they tried to convert them and they put them into what they call praying villages and um, herded them into these villages where they could be uh, evangelized and controlled. Um, but those who stood up to them, um, they simply wiped out. And do you and we show that, or well, we try to show that. Yeah. Show that. It's a, you know, we try and tell an epic story. In the, work, the, 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 the in the end, it becomes an issue of land and property. You know, they're, they're not, they're quite happy up to a point to share the land with the with the indigenous natives. But once there's pressure on them, they need that land. Boy, do they come up with re you know, really convincing yeah. reasons why the, why the red man has to go, you know. Yeah. So they've got no souls, they don't understand by property anyway, they're lazy, they waste the land, they don't know anything with it. They kept saying to it, you've got to be productive. The Indians don't do anything. You know, they fish, they fly about all day, they don't build universities or anything like that. It needs a white man to come and do that. Because the Jews got any kind of idleness, and idleness is all recreation. Just, yeah. just, that was just fishing with your children. Yeah. So, Devil's War, New World, that, to some extent, was a quite a departure, especially for you, Peter, from the, the sort of contemporary themes you've worked on in the past. Um, I, I think you've said that both productions are about political change and how it was brought about. Is that the fundamental connection? Yes, I think it's about how we organise ourselves, you know, uh, if, 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 with limited resources. I also think it's about how we bind, do we bind together change to create fairer, juster societies in which we can all share. I mean, that's, that's the fundamental thing that's going on in all of them, really. And all, that, all of them asking on a, on a, on a higher level, and really I've learned this question from Martine, which is how do we live a good life? You know, how do we, how, what, 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 what's the nature of love? What keep one human being for another? How do we share? How do we live a good life? What is a good life? You know? um, and at the same time, you're asking, how do we divide these resources and how can we get these fuckers who run the country? <laughs> <laughs> Where Habeas called. 
corpus being run. If that's not the first Guantanamo Bay, <laughs> it, it, it was extraordinary, wasn't it? You, you see these things just playing out, and that's why we need to know, we need to tell these stories. So we can be on How would you alone. ideally like to see a response to the dramas that you've created? What would you like to see happen next on these particular issues? I mean, you see. Oh, I would just love that um, my daughters and all their friends, my daughters and them can now vote, that they will be racing to, to vote in the election and to feel that they can change their world. Because you have to feel you can change the world. That's what we would hope. So keen on elected democracy myself, and that I don't think really gets us very far. And I haven't voted since 1974. I haven't voted since 1974. I've lived in a succession of highly Tory places where it's completely pointless. What's the, point? What's the point of me voting against Winston Churchill? You know, when, when I'm a student. So I'm, I'm not so keen on what I see happening. In, 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 so what is the alternative? Uh, well, I haven't got one. Is, is, is it to influence change through Well, well, that is one. You know, if you're lucky to have a job in which you can you you, you can have a voice and speak and speak for change, then you know, that that is a that is a form of being part of a democracy. I do believe in democracy, and you know, I just I just don't think what we have delivers very much to it. That's all. Uh, you know, we had a chance to vote for proportional representation so that everybody's vote would would count. People voted against it. Now, so, well, that was the wrong sort, I know. So, so where to now? Have you got any hopeful projects up your sleeves? Are, are we expecting uh, another uh, series on the same theme, or potentially another uh, uh, theme which would be insightful and uplifting? Well, we, we were quite bruised by the last experience, um, trying to tell the story of new worlds was so, um, in the hands of the broadcasters, just became so diminished, didn't mm -hmm. it? And, and uh, the story became diminished because of yeah. arbitrary and time concerns and politics. So you have to grow a, a thick skin in order to enter to that domain again? Well, you just lose the trust that you can never tell the story you want to tell because it becomes mm -hmm. so chiseled away. Yeah. I've, been, I've been asked to do, I've got an idea for it, it's essentially another of our friends in the north, eight, nine, ten parts, BBC say they want it. They'll never do it. <laughs> <laughs> and why is that because of money? Is that because of politics? Because they probably want to understand. They won't get it. <laughs> they think they'll get it, but they won't get it. Not, you know, I spent 14 years trying to get our friends in the north made, and it was easy, you know, in the sense that I was in my 30s and I could say to the guys who were running it, I'll just wait for you to die. Because <laughs> <laughs> they were 60 and I was 30, but I'm 60. I'm 60 and they're 30. They're not waiting for me to die. Yes. Yeah. 
housing. Thank you. 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 Thank Thank <laughs> you.